What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at I am Manny Wilson and follow the podcast page on Instagram at The Run Podcast. So we're going to get into these topics. Let's start off. The Battle of Los Angeles is real. Oh, my gosh. It was a show last night. If you watched it, you loved it. It was damn near like a playoff game the way they was battling out there. But I got some harsh news to break to y'all because... I'm not a fan of the Lakers, and I'm not a fan of the Clippers, but I do love watching great basketball. So to get into the game, if you watch the game, this is what you've seen. You've seen two great teams play each other. You've seen a a battle of talent and stardom versus grit, grind, hard work, effort. That's what you watch when you watch those teams. The Lakers were the talent, and they had all the stardom and all of that, all the hype. Of course, people are going to be like, oh, it's a lake town, whatever. Y'all know how that go. But the Clippers... They're the underdogs. Kawhi was balling out. I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to get to, to, to how Kawhi was balling out. Man, it was amazing. But Kawhi Leonard was balling out. Uh, uh, Lou Williams had a great game. Anthony Davis had a great game. It was all good. But until the fourth quarter hit, just so you know, the Clippers did actually ended up pulling off the game, if you, if you haven't heard yet. But the Clippers did win the game. Just so you know, AD cannot be messed with. And Kawhi Leonard cannot be messed with. Those two guys, what they did last night, I feel bad for the rest of the league because it looks like they're in trouble. The Lakers are going to – it's going to be – I said it before, but the Lakers and the Clippers are going to be the two teams that that go to the finals. One or the the other is going to the finals. There's going to be a Los Angeles team in the finals. And then we didn't even take take into perspective that Paul George is not even playing yet. And the Clippers still looked great last night. Paul George didn't even step foot on the floor. They still got injuries. And I get the Lakers still have injuries as well because Kuzma's not there. And, yeah, Rajon Rondo's not there. Everybody's new. Frank Vogel's new. He got all these new people. I don't think Frank Vogel is going to last that long because when the Lakers don't win the championship this year or if they don't win it this year, he's out of there because they know that LeBron only has so many years left until he can continue to to give his maximum effort up and down the court, whether it's on offense or whether it's on defense. So either way it goes, the the clock is ticking for Frank Vogel, man. It, it, it's really ticking, and it's going to be crazy. But one thing people don't realize, and I, I watched this. This is what I noticed when I watched the game the other day. The Clippers and Doc Rivers, he has an actual like game plan. When I was watching that game, it looked as if he had an actual game plan and things were going – Right. Things were things were going according to game plan. The offense looked smooth. It was constantly in a the flow. They could constantly get a bucket. They could constantly score the ball. And then don't even get me started on a defense. The defense on that Clippers team is ridiculous. And that was one of the main things, a main reasons why I loved the Clippers when they first assembled this team, because I'm like, damn, Kawhi, Paul George, Pat Beverly. Uh, uh, Montrez Harold, I'm like, it's so many people on that team that's defensive, defensively minded. And I'm like, man, you can tell when they were playing the Lakers, you could just tell there was everybody on the court was defensively sound. They were all locked in and they all applied pressure. That's going to be the biggest, that's going to be the, the biggest factor that, that separates them from the Lakers is the defensive intensity. Oh my gosh. And, yeah, I get the Lakers. They got AD. He can play defense. Uh, LeBron, he can play defense when he want. Avery Bradley, they got a good team on paper. And on paper, you if you compare these teams on paper, Lakers win every single time. But the thing people don't take into account is that the Clippers play off of hard work and they play off of effort and they play with a chip on their shoulder and they play with that grit that overshadows all of that talent and they overshadows all of that stardom. So it's going to be a battle every time. And one thing I said after after the game, after the Clippers won, I noticed, I said, this, the Lakers, they win in this game as in, okay, this is a season opener. This is a season opener, uh, first game of the season. We're playing a Clippers team. They're a little good. You know, they, they got some good stars on that team. We're playing. And the Clippers came into that game like, oh, we about to show they, we about to show them. We we about to show them what we do. Like this 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 is our town now. They came in with a chip on their shoulder and they went in into the game unlike it was a game and they went into the game as if it was war. Cause the way they were playing, the the way they were playing hard every single play, 
and, and the defensive intensity, the offensive intensity, it was all there. All right, now the players. Now I'm going to move on to the players. First off, like I said, Anthony Davis cannot be messed with. Cannot be messed with. Oh, my gosh. What he did to the Clippers, although they lost, that man is hes going to be a problem to every other team in the league. And I mean, damn, by far, by far. The Lakers, they didn't really have an offense. I didn't see any offensive flow or anything with them. It was more so Anthony Davis, go get a bucket. LeBron, go get a bucket. But damn it, every time they gave Anthony Davis the ball in a post, he just about put it in a hoop. He was going crazy. And so I'm watching that, and I'm like, whew, yeah, Anthony Davis can lead y'all, and he can get you to all these points and, and put you on his back. But damn, you got to come up with some kind of offensive scheme. You got to have some kind of offensive scheme throughout the last year throughout the season. You can't just pass Anthony Davis the ball every single time and, and hope for a win. Yeah, he going to get you some wins, of course, because clearly he can't be stopped. But that's not the route you really want to go. Like, are you serious? That's not the route you really want to go. And as far as LeBron James, he's LeBron James. We still know he's the best playmaker in the game, smartest player in the game, one of the smartest players to ever play the game. So we know what he's going to bring to the table. But in the fourth quarter of that game, he did not show up. I'm sorry. I, I hate to tell you that. If you're a LeBron fan, I hate to let you know. But, but damn it, he didn't show up. He had four points in the fourth quarter. Six, six turnovers, six turnovers. I mean, damn. Oh, my gosh. He was flipping it like that. Selling, talk about selling the game. That's exactly what LeBron was doing. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard was snapping. Didn't, damn near didn't miss the first half. Was going crazy. And, and it's, it's, it's very clear that his offensive game is even at a, a higher level than what it was last year in the finals and that's the scary part about it it's like damn we thought he was good last year in the finals and I get that it's one game I get that it's one game because I know somebody's gonna say that oh damn as many as one game Just calm down man they got a whole another 81 games to play uh, chill so I know it's one game but damn it if you watched it you hype and if you hype about basketball you also hype that Kawhi Leonard was snapping and his offensive game is in, a, in another level in his game it wasn't like when the when the Clippers were playing basketball. It wasn't like, all right, Kawhi Leonard, let's get a bucket. See what you can do, Kawhi Leonard. No. They had people coming off of screens. They had people running around the court, backdoor cuts, all kind of stuff. Kawhi Leonard, come off a screen, pop a midi, come off an off-ball screen, pop a midi. They ran a little bit of pick and roll. They ran off-ball screens. They did, they did so many things that were fundamental in the game of basketball. And I give cre- credit to Doc Rivers for doing that because – with this team, we've seen this Clippers team before any stars take Warriors to seven games. And that's already amazing right there with no stars. So, and I said this way before, like before they even got Paul George. They, once they get Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on the same team with a team that took the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant to seven games, once they get them on the same team. It's not going it's, to it's, – it's, oh, it's going to be bad. That's, that's really the only explanation for it. It's going to be bad. It's, it's, whew, whew. When Paul George come back, if he, if he come back hot and fully healthy and doing his thing, playing both sides of the ball, it's going to be tough for the Clippers to lose to anybody, especially come playoff time. Those guys are so tuned in mentally, it's, it sets them far apart from everyone else because they're so tuned in mentally. Patrick Beverly, damn near like a mini Kevin Garnett. Montrez Harrell, damn near a smaller Kevin Garnett. He's always into it mentally. Kawhi, he may not speak a lot, but you can tell he's damn near focused. You can tell he's locked in and loaded all the time because he's damn he's focused. And Paul George, when he come back, is going to be bad. Lou Will coming off the bench, giving you 30, 25 plus. That's, that's a key asset to the team. And, yeah, the Lakers, they look good on paper, and, and it looks flawless on paper, but this is why I say – the eye test never fails. The eye test never fails. Whenever you watch a game, you get it. You get the footage raw and you get it exactly how it is. Stats can't, you can't manipulate the eye test. Not at all. Unless you're crazy in the head. But other than that, you, you can't manipulate that. So I see, I, I, if the Lakers get into a groove, I hate to say it, but it's possible that they will go to the finals. But then again, it's going to just be a ba- another battle of L.A., and I cannot wait to watch it. I am going to be thrilled to watch it. I, I want let me, get, let me set this straight before we move on. But I want the Clippers 
to go to the finals, and I want Kawhi Leonard and Paul George to win a, win, a ring. I want them both in the Clippers to win a ring. I want Doc Rivers to get another ring. I want Patrick Beverly. I'm 100% all in for the Clippers if I had to choose a team in L.A. between the Lakers and the Clippers. But if the Lakers get into a groove with Anthony Davis and LeBron James and all the other role players they got on that team, it can be bad. But I'm just so excited to see another battle with L.A. And I think either one of these teams are going to go to the finals, and whoever goes to the finals is damn sure winning it. It's going to be the Bucks and one of the Los Angeles teams for sure.